Tate Houston. I'm the Texas Field Specialist with the Bee Informed Partnership. My name is Ben Salmon. I'm the North Central Field Specialist for Bee Informed. The Bee Informed Partnership is here to serve beekeepers. That is our main goal. We're here to bridge that gap between science and the management techniques that beekeepers use every day. We travel around our regions. We basically consult with commercial beekeepers. We do full colony inspections and assessments. We're looking for colony health metrics and we're doing a lot of uh, varroa mite sampling. And in California, one year, we found EFB in one of the breeder operations and we were able to alert them right away and they went and solved that problem before it got out of hand and we also were able to raise the alert to other beekeepers in that region to look out for EFB and be aware it's, it's around. And then also just trends with the, with the climate or feeding and so we can give information about that and that you can better you know, get ready to feed or get, better get ready to treat. The mites are creeping up real quick right now so we raise the flag before anybody, anyone else. And we have a lot of case studies and uh, field trials coming up this year actually. Um, kicking off in almonds, we're going to be doing some with different supplements, different, uh, different feeds and stuff like that. So we're going to follow the colonies the entire year. We've got some interesting data coming out, so stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> and all these trials, these are ideas, most of them are ideas for, directly from the beekeepers. So yeah. we don't answer to anyone else really except for the beekeeper. If they have these questions, and we try to come up with a protocol and a trial that can answer some of these questions. We also work with a number of queen breeders and help them select their breeding stock through hygienic testing. We have the hygienic testing data which shows the trend from when the beekeeper started doing hygienic testing uh, for uh, stock improvement and most of, our, most of our breeders see an increase in hygienic behavior every year that they do the testing. So they're selecting for these traits and they get to look back, you know, they've been doing it for 10 years, they can look back at where they started and see how far they've come with this historic data that we can provide to them. A lot of our beekeepers use it as a marketing tool. They're selling hygienic stock and it's really, uh, really a great stock improvement tool. The Varroa Sensitive Hygiene, which is the UBO, Unhealthy Brood Odor Test, is for a cell that a, a Varroa mite has infested and the brood is sending off a signal and saying, hey, I'm unhealthy, there's something in here that is, <laughs> it's, 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 ca it's causing trouble. That test is a little bit less invasive than the free skill brood assay test. It's quicker. It's, I think it's just a two hour time frame. Theoretically, we've done on all the breeders in just one afternoon and um, it's targeting the, the varroa hygiene trait as opposed to more of a general dead or brood removal. We did do some trials on it so it's not really commercially available yet but we did get some of the compound and we did a lot of testing on it and we're still waiting on some of the results and they're crunching the numbers and comparing the data from all the trials we did earlier this year. The UBO research has really sparked my interest. I'm interested to see when it becomes available to beekeepers to use, how that's going to work more in a commercial setting, and yeah, really excited to see that data come out and see beekeepers start selecting for those varroa sensitive hygienic traits. We're compiling a lot of data. We've taken thousands and thousands of samples, and those are all recorded in the database. The goal is in the, in the future as we build out this database to be able to recognize trends. We're linking up management and treatment information with actual metrics that we're seeing, varroa levels and disease, disease levels, colony strength. So ideally in the future we'd be able to pinpoint what management techniques are working and which are, are not. The data set gets larger and larger, we can more reliably predict trends and predict what management practices are going to lead to success. We're also setting aside some subsets of samples so that um, even in the future, if there's a new virus that pops up, we can look back at the historical samples and test those for the new virus to see when that actually came to this country or when it emerged. We have the potential to have a huge impact just because of the access we have to all these different operations. We've established trust with the beekeepers, different agricultural industries. They have advocates, they have lobbyists, they have farm bill money, they have a lot of resources, extension agents, and the beekeeping community has been, I feel like it's been left behind a little bit. So 
We're trying to fill, fill that gap. That's why resources are needed and appreciated. We just want to say thank you to Pam. Uh, we know Biff and Pam kind of grew up together and uh, we just want a, a huge thank you and congratulations on 10 million in funding. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah besides just the financial support, um, Pam has done really great things with just publicizing our program and getting the word out and uh, in collaborating. Um, so I think we're, we're great partners and hope to continue that. We love beekeepers, we love beekeeping and we want to uh, do the best we can to make American beekeeping a better industry. Mm -hmm.